Hi everyone, this is Player2. I wanted to talk to you about something that I've been hearing spring up again lately. While it isn't something new, I am now compelled to do a video on it because I've been hearing so many misconceptions from random people. So much so that Player1 and I have gotten into debates about the pros and cons of it with random people and friends. So with that said, today's video is going to focus on digital versus physical games. Before we begin, I want to let you know that this is a three-part video series and it will only be focusing on video game consoles and not PC. Sorry my PC brethren, I promise to get you on the next time around. With that said, let's begin part one. So let's talk about technology first. One argument I've been hearing regarding technology is about storage and access. I hear people say things like digital games equals eco-friendly gaming. Proponents of this argument say that the sale of physical games leaves a larger carbon footprint on the environment because companies have to use more resources. These resources come in the shape of manufacturing, transport, and distribution of games. While yes, you are correct that companies do not have to manufacture, transport, and distribute the games, the games still have to be housed and distributed digitally. This comes in the shape of maintaining servers, constantly switching out bad hard drives, getting new servers, and having new networks to support the downloading of the digital game. Not to mention the cooling systems to maintain these server rooms, the electricity they require, and the buildings needed to house them. Then there is the need to have even faster ways of distributing the media. So you need faster connections and ISPs. And all this changes every so often due to advancements in technology. This is not even counting the new carbon footprint being made when all this new hardware gets changed and thrown away. Another argument I've heard is that we need to get hit with the times. That we're holding things back because our reluctance of accepting online connected all the time devices. That everything in today's world is connected. We have smartphones, tablets, and they're all connected. While this is true, we are more connected today than ever, that doesn't necessarily translate to a better gaming experience. Take for instance internet connections. In the states, we don't all run on gigabit speed or even have internet. The infrastructure is not there yet. Then there is the issue of data caps. We all have heard a lot of ISPs and even phone providers have data caps now. So imagine you have to download a game that you already have paid for and then have to pay additional fees because your internet provider is having you on a data cap. This is a real issue. If you factor in that you watch YouTube, by the way, thanks for watching this video, and maybe have Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, and then use the internet for other things, on top of everything, you download games, well, that data cap soon becomes an even more real and serious problem. This is not even counting other devices being connected to your network. We are now heading to 4K and all those wondrous teraflops. Do you think that an upscaled or native 4K game is going to equal the same amount of data as a 1080 game? Of course not. Just look at some of the downloads that are happening right now. This is all going to eat into your data cap. Let's not forget that if you run out of space quickly on your hard drive right now, just imagine when you have 4K games. I can only imagine how much storage I will need seeing as my Call of Duty Black Ops game is sitting at over 80 gigs of space on my hard drive. This only leads to me now having to buy even bigger hard drives so that I can have space for more games. This only serves to even further dispel the, the illusion that eco-friendly gaming equals digital games. The next argument I have heard regarding the greatness of digital games is about their install and patches. I've heard people say that digital games can always be patched and maintained, all the while creating an atmosphere where there is more content for the player. I don't know about you, but when I hear those words, I hear microtransactions and DLC and also lazy developing. Now it is true that physical games have installs and patches. The argument can be made that digital distribution has led to lazy developers starting to release games that are not complete on launch. So they roll out patches and installs on day one or shortly after to fix their mistakes and unethical business practices. Hence, we get games like Unity, Arkham Knight, No Man's Lies. Also, these patches don't always fix things, sometimes they make things worse. For me, I'd rather have a game come out complete and working. Then there is also the lengthy installs and patches that lead to what I call the unholy trio. The first one I call is data corruption, in the form of having saves erased and or game files being corrupted. This then means that you have to re-download the game, leading to more data and or calling Xbox or PlayStation to get your saves back. I don't know about you, but I don't like being on hold for long periods of time trying to get my saves back or using technical support to get the digital game working. This doesn't even include that if you have a hard drive that goes bad, you have to re-download everything all over again. Not the case with physical games because I can just pop them in and start playing right away. The second unholy is that companies can restrict you with digital games by either blocking, removing components, or elements of the games altogether. Let's take a trip down memory lane, shall we? Do you guys remember PT, the Silent Hills game? That was a digital game. 
Another example is how games that were supported on the PS TV were removed from the support list altogether. This can lead to developers or companies blocking components of the game and then charging for them if they want to. How many examples of this have we already heard of in today's generation? Guys, all I'm saying is that if I can think it up, I'm sure some greedy little guy in an office of one of the AAA companies has, has thought of this already. Finally, the most unholy of all is the dreaded DRM. While DRM can come in the form of what I just pointed out earlier, it can also come in the form of not allowing for sharing or trading of games. Some of you will remember the Xbox debacle a couple years back, but there is truth in that. Companies are all about making money, and they view you lending a game to a friend as money being left on the table. So don't believe that they won't try to do it again. Plus, you won't even own your game, and you won't be able to trade or sell it. And I don't know about you, but I like owning my games and owning what I spend my money on. The final argument I will discuss in part one of this series is one that I've heard many times. I've heard people say that by buying digital games, we can change the market and developers and companies will charge less. This is really disturbing to me when I hear people say this because it simply is not the case. While I do think that some people really believe that this will happen, I believe that they are being too naive at best. Digital games have been around for many years now. Pricing on digital games should be cheaper because companies are not producing packaging, instruction booklets, and shipping the product out. Yet on launch date, they are the same price as the physical counterparts. The company's main objective is to be profitable and make money for its shareholders. That's it. If this was the case, we would have already seen significant price drops on digital games. We should have seen them when booklets started to disappear and plastic on the boxes became thinner. Don't believe the hype. Well guys, that's it for part 1 on the digital versus physical game series. Stay tuned for part 2 and like always, let me know your thoughts on the matter in the comment section and thanks for watching. Player 2 out.